Joining me now, business writer for The Herald Sun, Terry McCran. Terry, always love having you on the show. The intergenerational report that's going to be released on Thursday, but we already know that it reveals Australia's growing population. We're set to hit 40 million people and the population's going to be a lot older. There's reports today that our living standards will be affected. The Treasurer was asked today at a press conference how we're going to pay for all of this, this greying Australia. What do you think is the answer here? <laughs> well, he obviously didn't give an answer, Sherry. I mean, this is a joke. This is a gigantic hoax perpetrated on the Australian people by the bureaucrats in Canberra. I mean, we know every year that Treasury is completely unable to forecast the budget numbers even three and four years into the future, yet they purport to be able to tell us exactly what Australia is going to look like in 2063, 40 years into the future. Now, some of these things are statements of the bloody obvious. Yes, there'll be more people. Oh, oh big, you know, big surprise. We're having mm. 400,000 come in in migration every year. They're going to be older Australians. Big surprise. People grow old. Uh, and so on. And, and yet there's nothing in this report as far as we know. And we've got this rather strange process the Treasurer's undertaken of releasing it on Thursday, but dribbling it out starting on the weekend. Mm. Uh, there's nothing in the report which actually says, how do we actually address these issues? How do we actually come to terms with them and make them actually work to make Australia a better place? Mm. Look, producti productivity is a key issue that's raised with this report, also Jennifer Westacott today. Do you think that we're seeing the Albanese government running some contradictory policies? It's pursuing industrial relations reform. We know that's going to slow productivity, more red tape for businesses, harder to employ people. But at the same time, they need to lift productivity, not just for our economic future, but, but even in a sh the more shorter term, to get inflation down. Well, absolutely, Shari, you've nailed it precisely. Oh, thank that you. The future will only be prosperous, the future will only be prosperous if we have a dramatic improvement in productivity, and not just a one-off, but every year. We've got to have a productivity mentality and a productivity process which actually delivers it. But as you say, Shari, the government's short-term agenda is to actually be anti-productivity. It's attacking business. It's attacking the dynamics that make business more productive and more effective and to create jobs which are actually well-paying jobs and that actually generate mm. uh, improved, improved outcomes for Australians. Mm. Now, what do you think about this? We saw the CFMEU at Labor's National Conference uh, encourage the government <laughs> to have a union spot on the RBA board. Dutton says this would be disastrous, don't do it. Do you think Labor will succumb to pressure from the CFMEU on this or, or will keep them at bay? Well, they might succumb to pressure from the, from the trade union movement most, more generally, maybe not the CFMEU pre precisely. And I don't personally have a problem with a unionist being on the board. We've had unionists on the board of the Reserve Bank before, most notably Bob Hawke back in the 1970s. 1970s and so it's not exactly a bad idea but uh, and I think also unions on the board will actually be, in, be inside the tent and see the sorts of challenges that the Reserve Bank has to deal with and face the economy more generally but not if we're going to sort of see we've got to have a unionist that's going to run a pro-union anti-business agenda no that would be a big mm. mistake as it would apply to anybody on the board that was not going to actually do their job. Mm -mm. All right, Terry McCrown, we'll read you in the Herald Sun. Thank you very much for your time.